This program is brought to you by Stanford University. This shows some of the results of the workshop for the Paul Drescher Ensemble production, Schick Machine, that took place at the Ensemble's rehearsal studio, August 20th through 25th, 2008. Participating in the workshop were all the key collaborators, performer Stephen Schick, writer and director Dorindy Eckert, mechanical sound sculptor Matt Heckert, instrument inventor Daniel Schmidt, and composer, instrument inventor, and overall artistic director Paul Drescher. The primary goals of the workshop were to test the evolving musical instruments and sound sculptures and to explore the overall narrative structure of the work. The collaborative team that makes this project, uh, in addition to Stephen Schick, who we will see on stage, is really a, a very deep and broad group of people. Rindy Eckert is a longtime collaborator of myself who's a remarkable performer, but we won't see him perform in this piece. He's also a very, very accomplished writer and director, and so he is creating text writing the text. It's not going to be a traditional story from start to finish with a narrative, at least we don't believe it's going to be. That's not our intention. But it will be something that will accumulate its narrative effect over the course of the whole performance. He'll be writing and directing the piece. One of the biggest challenges of making Schick Machine is we have only a single performer on the stage. So I knew that I had to find ways to, to create the kind of layered richness that I need as a composer to, to, to create larger forms and to make something work over the course of 80 or 90 minutes. So one of the first choices uh, was to, to work with sound producing objects that Steve could perform but that also could continue sounding and playing on their own. So hence the use of a motor in a device like this. That motor can go, this instrument could keep sounding while Steve is off doing something else. He might be speaking, he might be singing, he might be playing an entirely different instrument. There's always a question about um, why do people go to live performance, particularly when we have so much electronic media to choose from, so many different forms of entertainment. And both as a performer and as an audience member, I, I always prefer a live performance because the kind of dynamic that happens between performer and audience, the energy that can happen, and the danger that's inherently there. You know, when you see something on television, when you see a film, you know you're seeing the finished product. You know you're seeing something that someone said, I, this is what I wanted to make, this is perfect or as good as we could do. But what happens in live performance, it's dangerous. You don't know if, it, if people are going to succeed at their endeavor or not. And sometimes, particularly when there's improvisation involved, sometimes those things can be miraculous. And sometimes they can fall dead. And that's why you go, because it's, you're taking a chance. The performers are taking a chance, the audience is taking a chance. There's always the possibility of something transcendent happening. Thank you.